Welcome to lecture 12. In today's lecture, we will quantify the activity coefficient for ionic solutions and apply it to sparingly soluble salts in order to describe the process of salting in and salting out. This lecture will be broken down into three parts. In the first part, we will define the activity coefficient, gamma, for ions in solutions. In the second part, we will use two versions of the debye huckel laws to calculate the activity coefficient for ionic solutions, and then apply it in the third part to see how the activity coefficient affects the solubility of ions. Electrolyte solutions, meaning solutions composed of molecules that break down into charged ions when in solution, deviate from ideal conditions at low concentrations. This is because of the coulombic forces between ions that act over a long range. Therefore, we have to treat ionic systems as real solutions. Like all real solutions, we will write their activities to include an activity coefficient, meaning that the activity of component J is equal to the activity coefficient of component J times the molal concentration of component J divided by the standard molal concentration, where we use the standard molality being one mole per kilogram in this case, we will use molality instead of molarity because molality is temperature independent. Gamma sub j is the activity coefficient. This quantifies the deviation from ideal conditions for the solute. Just as Henry's law would predict, as the molality of component j goes to zero, then the activity coefficient of component j goes to one. In real terms, as the system is diluted, the closer it returns to ideal conditions. Having defined the activity of the solute, we can write the chemical potential of component J as the chemical potential of component J being equal to the standard chemical potential of component J plus R times T times the natural logarithm of the activity of component J. Now, consider the dissociation of table salt and water being NaCl being deposited in liquid H2O, and that's in equilibrium with the Na plus aqueous and the Cl minus aqueous ions. And the activities for this process include the activity for the sodium ion being gamma plus times the molality of the sodium ion divided by the standard molality, and the activity for the chlorine ion is equal to gamma minus times the molality of the chlorine ion divided by the standard molality. So in order to calculate the activities, we need to know the concentration and the activity coefficients. However, no procedure currently exists to measure gamma plus or gamma minus since separating the effect of the cation from the anion is not possible. They both occur simultaneously and are not easily separated. So, we need a method to calculate the activity coefficients for both ions. This method won't directly involve using the individual activity coefficients. Consider instead a salt m nu plus x nu minus, where m forms the positive ion and x forms the negative ion, while nu plus and nu minus are the number of m and x in the salt. The Gibbs free energy for the salt is n plus being the number of moles of the positive ion times the chemical potential of the positive ion, plus n minus being the number of moles of the negative ion times the chemical potential of the negative ion. Using the definition of the chemical potential for non-ideal dilute solutions, meaning the chemical potential of component J is equal to the standard chemical potential of component J plus RT times the natural logarithm of the activity of component J, where the activity of component J is equal to the activity coefficient of component J times the molal concentration of component J divided by the standard molality and knowing this, it can be shown that the average activity coefficient, being something that is defined as gamma plus minus, can be defined as gamma plus minus raised to the power of nu plus plus nu minus is equal to gamma plus raised to the power of nu plus times gamma minus raised to the power of nu minus. And when we define this average activity coefficient, we can actually include that into our expression of Gibbs free energy where the average activity coefficient is now used as the activity coefficient for both ions, meaning that we can write the total Gibbs free energy as N plus times the standard chemical potential of the positive ion plus RT times the natural logarithm of gamma plus minus times the molal concentration of the positive ion divided by the standard molal concentration, and that's all plus N minus times the standard chemical potential of the negative ion plus RT times the natural logarithm of gamma plus minus 
times the molality of the negative ion divided by the standard molal concentration. Let's now do a quick calculation in order to calculate an average activity coefficient, where in this problem we're going to take some Na2SO4 and we're going to dissolve it in water to form a 0.01 moles per kilogram solution. And let's pretend that we could actually calculate the activity coefficients for the sodium plus ion and the SO4 2 minus ion being equal to 0 0.98 and 0 0.84 respectively. And so what we're going to do in this problem is that we're going to calculate the average activity coefficient and then we're just going to calculate the activities for each ion using the average activity coefficient. So my first step here is just to write down the balanced chemical reaction. So we have the Na2SO4 which is a solid, and to that we're throwing it into water, H2O, which is a liquid. This is an equilibrium where we're going to have two Na plus aqueous ions, and we're going to have one SO4, two minus aqueous ion. And so based on this, we can actually then start to write down our average activity coefficient expression, which is this gamma plus minus raised to the power of nu plus plus nu minus, and that's going to be equal to gamma plus raised to the power of nu plus times gamma minus raised to the power of gamma, or sorry, nu minus. And so the values that I'm going to be plugging in here is on this left hand side I've got gamma plus minus. Well nu plus in this case, that's just going to be equal to the stoichiometric coefficient here, and that's equal to 2 since there's two Na pluses. So I'm going to have 2 plus, and the stoichiometric coefficient in front of the SO4 2 minus is just a 1. So it's 2 plus 1. And that's going to be equal to the gamma plus, where in this problem we define gamma plus as 0.98. So I'm going to have 0 0.98 raised to the power of 2, since again I have two sodium ions. And then that's going to be multiplied by, I have the 0.84 for the SO4 2 minus ion, 0 0.84. And that's going to be raised to the power of 1, because I've only got one SO4 2 minus. And so if I evaluate the left-hand side and the right-hand side, what I get is gamma plus minus raised to the power of 3, and that's going to be equal to 0 0.807. And so at this point, then, I'm just going to take the cube root of both sides. And once that's done, I can say gamma plus minus is equal to 0 0.931. So that's part 1 finished. So let's now do part 2, where it says calculate the activities of each ion. So I'm going to have the activity of Na+, plus, and that's just going to be equal to gamma plus minus times the mole concentration of the sodium ion divided by the standard mole concentration. And so when I start substituting in numbers, what I'm going to get is the activity of the sodium ion is equal to gamma plus minus, which we just calculated, 0 0.931. The concentration of the sodium ion well, we start off with a concentration of the salt as 0.01 moles per kilogram, and since there's two sodium ions for every one um, mole of the salt itself, then that means I'm going to have 2 times 0 0.01 as my mole concentration of sodium. And that I'm just going to divide it by one kilogram or one mole per kilogram, which is the standard molal concentration. And so at the end of the day, when I multiply these numbers together, I'm going to get 0 0.019 moles per kilogram. Looking forward now, if I calculate then the activity of the SO4 2 minus, that's just going to be equal to gamma plus minus times the molal concentration of the SO4 2 minus divided by the standard molal concentration. Activity of SO4 2 minus, well again, this average activity coefficient is just 0 0.931. And then since for every one mole of salt I put in, I get one mole of SO4 2 minus, then it's just going to be 0 0.01 divided by 1. And so when I multiply these numbers together, I'm going to get 0 0.0093 as the activity for the SO4 2 minus.